So unfortunately with my cassette tech, I don't have a headphone monitor. And what that means is that I can't hear what I'm recording to tape unless I press stop, rewind, flip the cables, and then press play again. So what I need to do is record it to tape multiple times at different volume levels, and then choose my favorite at the end. So, so far we've used a reference tone for two different purposes. The first one was to loop a note in the background. That way we can set the key and set the tone for the track. And I looped a constant G in the background. It sounds like this. Playing this G in the background, we came up with these chords together. Let's listen to them again. I'm now gonna mute the reference tone. And so if you see this clip here, Command J consolidates the clip, and now it tells us at its highest volume, the most that it's gonna be is minus 14.3 dB. So this is from peak. If we increase this fader, you can see that the, uh, the audio waves start to take up the full space. So our clip value before was 14.3. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna copy paste this clip multiple times. So we've copy pasted it a bunch. I'm now gonna change all the clip volumes so that they increase in increments of one decibel. So the first one here was minus 14.3 decibels. The second one is gonna be minus 13.3. Third one here, minus 12.3. And I think that you can see the pattern. All right, I hope you can see that now these clips are increasing in volume gradually. They're going up in increments of one decibel. Well, why is this useful? How hard we drive these chords to tape is gonna determine whether or not they come out sounding smooth or distorted. The harder that you drive them, the more crunch that you add, and the lower that you drive them, meaning how quiet the volume is, usually this means the chords are gonna be dusty and have like a higher noise floor. They might have a higher level of hiss in them. And that can be nice too. Things that have more hiss tend to feel like they're recorded closely and more intimately and that they're not distant from you. They feel kind of like warm and wrapped. Since my cassette deck doesn't have a headphone monitor, there's no way for me to listen to the recording as I make it. I can only listen to the digital signal before it hits tape. For that reason, I'm creating multiple copies of the same digital file and I'm increasing the volume levels gradually. This is gonna give us a wide sample set to choose from and we can choose our desired level of drive based on the samples that we have at the end. So maybe the first one is a little bit too quiet and the last one is like way too distorted, but our money sample is somewhere in the middle. And we don't know where that's gonna be yet until we actually make the recording and listen to it back. We want to know in relation to another note how loud our signal is. This G note right here is at minus 6 as a clip and as a track it's minus 10. So together when I play these G notes, this track plays back at minus 16 dB. So we know that this signal is minus 16 dB. Now when recording that to tape, I'm not going to line up minus 16 with minus 16. I'm actually going to line up minus 16 in my DAW with minus 6 on my cassette deck. That's gonna give me an extra plus 10 of drive. We're gonna see that as the recordings increase in volume, they're gonna fill up the tape even more and create a more rich or colorful recording. By the end, it's probably gonna get really distorted. So the first recording that we're gonna to do to tape is gonna be at minus six dB. The second chord progression is gonna be minus five dB to tape. We have minus four, minus three, minus two, minus one dB, and then here we get to zero. All these other clips to the right of this white clip are now gonna be with increased drive or increased gain. This first this one is going to be plus one. This is plus two decibels, plus seven, plus eight. We're going to have a huge range of chord progressions to choose from. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to get out the tape deck. We're going to play the reference tone. We're going to line up minus 16 with minus six. The final recording is going to get maybe plus nine or plus 10 gain to tape, whereas the first one is not going to have any gain. This ensures that you have a wide range of samples to choose from, even though you can't monitor directly while recording to tape. This is a workaround since we don't have a headphone monitor on our cassette deck. So let's take out the cassette deck and let's check it out. All right, so let me walk through what I'm doing here. Again, I'm not gonna be using the nice microphone, so you're just gonna have the audio from the phone. Um, so in order to record with this Tanberg, what I do is I press pause, I press record. That means recording's enabled, but nothing's happening over here, it's frozen. As soon as I take it off pause again, it says, all right, now it's recording, um, and you can see the wheels are turning, the cassette is moving. Uh, up here, the analog VUs have nothing going through them because there's no audio signal being transmitted to the deck. If I press my space bar and I start playing in Ableton, you'll see that the needles go up on the analog VU meters. Right now, it's about minus six. I'm gonna press pause again so they go back down to zero. Now, the way that I got them to minus six 
is that I have a volume toggle over on my audio interface and I can control how loud it is recording to tape. Right now, for instance, it's about minus six. So here we can see minus six on the right, left is still a little too intense. So what I'm gonna do is decrease the intensity on the left input level. And just pausing it here, this is what's really useful about having independent control of left and right. Like when I first got into this stuff, I was like, why would you ever want left and right control? Why wouldn't you just want one knob for stereo? Meaning like, oh, I'm gonna drive to the tape this hard. Because the cassette deck might be kind of wonky or broken and you need to use these things to compensate. So next I'm gonna do pause, record, and then unpause. And then I'm gonna press play in Ableton. That's gonna bring these up to about minus six. And I'm gonna to adjust to compensate for the levels of intensity. This is the fine tuning part where you're just kind of like, yeah, it's about six. I also adjust the preamps on the audio interface going in. Um, so gain staging is really important. A mono signal leaves the computer and then comes to the cassette deck. You then have to compensate and make sure that you get it exactly even. Then when you play back off of tape, I know that I wanna get the same number on the left and right side when I record back to the computer. Thank you. 